Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to review some of the stuff we've gotten to earlier and incorporate some of the, the uh, more recent uh, explorations in with stuff that we, we did maybe a year ago. And uh, first, I wanted to, uh, uh, Dennis had something he had, he wanted to share with us about, uh, about rooting. So uh, Dennis, why don't you fire away there and, uh, and. Okay. Well, I was reviewing the classes from last year about the, the myth of, the myth of shipping weight. And I was saying how I could always root on two feet, but I had great difficulty rooting on one foot. And I could never support my weight on one foot. And it was, I always thought, well, I'm a, you know, a big guy. And whenever, whenever I would try to root on one foot, it was just my leg couldn't, my one leg couldn't bear the weight. And, and it was just, I, I couldn't hold my body up, but I couldn't put the other foot down fast enough. And when I was in, in, in the classes of the shifting the weight, you did mention about how people just shift their hip and they uproot themselves, but you really didn't discuss much about, about rooting in those classes. And in one of the demonstrations, you had Maria put her, put her hand on your Dante N and she used to show how much your stomach moved. And you really only, your Dante N only moved maybe a quarter turn, if that much. And when I tried that, all at once I could root on one one leg. And it was just like, like, like you know, like magic. And it, it just took all the weight out of that one leg. It was like effortless, effortless standing on, 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 one, on one leg. That was like a pelican on one leg. And I could pick up that leg, I could move it around, I could move it left, I could move it right. And, you know, and, and it just opened up everything. And, uh, you know, uh, somebody asked a question, I was telling Rick, that somebody asked a question in the, in the class, you know, well, what do you do with the unweighted, un, 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 unweighted leg, un, unsubstantial leg? And she, he, Rick kind of joked that nobody asked that question before. And the answer is that the unsubstantial leg is ready to take the next step for the next posture. You can put that leg down and yet leg is empty. You can put it down and you can feel the ball of your foot. You can set your knee, you can set your quad. The unsubstantial leg becomes a substantial. Then the substantial leg becomes the unsubstantial. Yin becomes yang, yang becomes yin. And that's Tai Chi. You know, and since that, all weekend, I've been just taking steps. I've been practicing, you know, parts of the form. You know, it, it's, just, it's opened up a whole new world of Tai Chi for me. And it's, uh, you know, I'd like to hear more about rooting and, and you know, what, it's a whole new thing that's, it's it, it's really surprised me, you know. It lit up all the bells and bells and whistles on the pinball machine, you know. The lights flashing, free game, free game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Uh, anybody have any uh, thoughts or questions on what Dennis has just been talking about? Anybody? Jonathan. Uh, once again, a salesman for not Tai Chi, but the first nine moves before you do your Tai Chi encapsulates, I think, perfectly everything you just discussed. I think the way Rick has set us to start the formal Tai Chi does, does everything you've just discovered and talked about there. So I'm just pitching again for that opening nine steps of introduction before we start the actual form. Right. And should anybody tuning into this not know what Jonathan's talking about, we're talking about breaking down that initial opening where you just take a step to the side and breaking it down into nine or 10 actual distinct postures that you go through. And each one of them feeds the, feeds the next one. Each one of them feeds into uh, uh, establishes the foundation for the next thing to happen. And if you, uh, if you miss a step, then you got to go back and find it because it's, uh, uh, you're going to break your root if you, if you, if you do, you want to have that continuity of energetic connection and rooting throughout the whole, the whole, uh, uh, 
starts with that, that establishes the, that foundation, which then extends through every movement of the form. So uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll just review that tonight, just to go through uh, to uh, play around with that. But first, let's just talk about rooting a little bit. Uh, and uh, I really want to emphasize that rooting is not a mechanical thing; it is an energetic thing, and we establish it by by establishing relationships through the body between the heavens and earth and uh, and the chi uh the big chi but it is that energetic connection that energetic attraction to the earth that really makes the root sing and without that you have mechanical bracing where you can you can lock into a, a very fixed position but it's limited by the uh, by the structure, and some structures are very good for certain directions, but not so good for others. But when we're talking about rooting, we're talking about having this omnidirectional uh, energetic connection, so that you can stand with your feet parallel, straight up, and 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 still maintain your position in space just by your energetic connection with the earth. And so much of what we've been doing and exploring with the, you know, in this past year plus has been, how do we amplify that energetic connection with the earth? How do we get out of our own way so that we can really feel that throughout? And it's not just when someone's pushing on me, but whenever you, have that energetic connection is feeding you you're plugging into the big chi and you're constantly replenishing your energy so the demonstration of it that is can i stand on one foot and have someone push on me that's that's a really cool demonstration and kind of affirms you know that oh there is something going on here but it's not really where the value or most of the value is. Most of the value comes in the fact that you are actively engaged in an energetic exchange with something much greater than you are. And with that, you're constantly regenerating, purifying, uh, renewing your own chi. And that's a lot of fun. And so, you know, I emphasize in any forms that I teach, that that be a constant throughout the whole form. And you can test it by having someone push on you in any posture and any transition and see if indeed you are rooted in that posture. And if you're not, then you are not getting the maximum value you could from your whatever form or qigong or whatever you're doing. So you want to have that as a concept. So we keep coming back to you know, what I call the three pillars, where you are establishing those connections and getting out of your own way so that then you can do cool stuff. And uh, if you try to go to the cool stuff before establishing those, it's, you're just gonna have a surface experience of those things. Okay, so, uh, um, terms of rooting we whatever we're looking for that sweet spot we're looking for a place where the connection is is the most profound and also seemingly empty so it, it, it's paradoxical in that when you are really rooted, it feels like you're not. If you, and it feels like you're, you know, you, you, you don't have anything. And that's because you're plugged into the big chi and you have gotten rid of, at least temporarily, most of the muscular uh, contractions, most of the muscular tension that distracts you from that 
from from that state. So it's a uh, you're you're constantly looking for that 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 sweet spot. So the um, let's uh, let's take a a look at that 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 exercise Jonathan was talking about. It's something that every time you do it, it's a brand new thing. You know, because we did it, you know, we've done it dozens of times. Doesn't mean it's it's um, any less novel whenever we do it now. Because each time you you establish these relationships, your body is different. Your your position in space is different. No matter how much you try to approximate the external conditions, it's different. Everything's different. So you have to go and and seek a new this relationship you it's like like talking to god you uh, you immediately you establish these, these these links and and you're in the radical present you get to the gap between thoughts and you're you're plugged in and from there then we can start we can start to do other things so let's take a look at the, at that and just kind of go through that that particular thing, we'll do it nice and slow so you get a chance to feel into it. Is that your question? Oh, the mic is booming. Uh, oh, mic, mic is booming a bit. Okay. Is the mic booming? Yes. Yes, it's, it is. It's just noisy. It's making rattle, rattle. It sounds like you've got a light wind blowing over here. Ah, that's that. Thank you for, for calling that out. There was a fan right overhead blowing right down on it. So uh, that could be it. <laughs> how does that sound? Is that better? Much better. Good. Thank you for, for, for that clarification. <laughs> Oops. Let me turn off the air conditioner too while I'm at it. Get rid of all the noise. There we go. Okay, yeah. Much quieter. Okay, so we're going to beat uh, heels together, toes apart. And we're going to establish the three pillars as if you've never done it before, but you kind of know the way. So if you feel the balls of your feet, allow the weight to settle throughout the foot, but you are noticing, feeling through the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. You're allowing your weight to sink down. Imagine you're an hourglass and the point where your feet touch the ground, that's the, that's the neck between the top and the bottom. So all that energy is sinking down through that into a space below the floor that is just as big as the space above the floor, like an hourglass. And just feeling the, the sand dropping down. Reach for the crown of your head. And tuck in the chin. Open the jade pillow gate as you do that. Check again to the balls of your feet. Feel into that. And just notice the instantaneous transformation that occurs just by doing those things. Now relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. You're reaching down with your Wei Lu at the coccyx. And you're reaching up with the crown, lengthening your spine and opening the energy channels along the spine and through the spine.
point your index fingers, feel the energetic coherence. Reach with the elbows. Allow your quad, your quad to be get sung. You can spiral down, turn, just to get that, get that re, reacquaint yourself with your quad. Just really get into the three pillars for a moment. As I said, each time it's new, each time we're looking for that sweet spot. And it changes moment by moment. So you are continually reacquainting yourself with that relationship. Now feel the ball of your right foot. And allow that to begin the conversation. Starting to establish your substantiality in your right leg. Your weight's still 50-50, but you have prepared yourself to make the trans, trans, transition from 50-50 to being single-weighted in your right leg. Now, set your right knee so that you're feeling it aligning with the ball of your right foot in a way that you really feel supported there. Release the right quad spiraling down to the left. So you're starting to empty out the left leg and load up the right leg. So you got about 30% in your left leg and about 70% in your right leg now. Your spine is still vertical. Your butt has not moved out to the side at all. And like Dennis was saying, there's a very slight turn. Not a, not a gross turn. It just, oh, it's a, it's a little, just enough so you can make that connection. And you're looking for the sweet spot there. Now you can go farther, but for right now, this is perfect, just, just that little bit. So if I'm turning, you can see it just, oh, just a little bit there. Just enough to allow me to really relax and get sung. We've been playing a lot lately with you know, being able to get more sung in the legs and be able to really get stronger in our legs as we do this. Now turn. So when you turn, we're gonna move from the yao, which is that lower lumbar area. And we're gonna use that to turn the body to the right. And again, as you're turning, you're not, an, not a huge turn, just, just enough to allow the weight to settle into that right leg, allow the substantiality of that right leg to really assert itself. We have about 90% in the right leg now. We're still keeping that central pillar. So we're rotating around that central pillar. Reaching with the crown. Feeling the index fingers. Pick up the left heel. Allow yourself to sink a little more into that right leg. So you're really feeling the substantiality there. Pick up the left foot and step out. 
to the side, not far, about a hip width. You want to be able to do that with such control that you can easily step back, step out, step back, and remain rooted throughout. So that ability to do this, what Dennis was talking about, what, what do you do with that insubstantial foot? Well, it's actually, what do you want to do? You know, once you have that stability of the substantial foot, then, oh, I can step out to the side and establish a position here. I'm going to establish a position just by placing the foot down and feeling the ground with, the, with that foot. Spine stays vertical. Now feel the ball of the left foot. So now we're establishing the substantiality in the left leg. We're preparing the left leg to take over more of the load. We set the left knee. So now we're creating a very stable foundation for the turn. And we start to load up the left quad by spiraling down to the right. So we're relieving some of the, the load in the right leg and transferring it back to the left. And as we do it, we turn to the right a bit as we, we spiral down to the right. So we're loading up, we're getting very soon in that, in that left quad. And then turn, use your yao, and turn back to center. And wait, back to 50-50, but in an entirely new way now. Because you are accumulating all that energy from the continuity of movement, that continuity of energetic connection that allows the body to fill. This allows for the foundation for whatever we want to do, wherever we want to go from here, we have that, we have that foundation established. So before we go on, any questions or thoughts on this? Buddy, all look good, look good. Okay, great. Go on. Okay, moving forward. So let's do, uh, let's incorporate some of the stuff we've been, we've been talking about with some foundation exercises. We'll use some of the ones that we were playing with a year ago and we're gonna modify some. But let's, uh, let's begin by really emphasizing the quad. We're gonna step forward with your right foot. Okay, and Feel the ball of the right foot, set the knee, and pick up the heel of your left foot. So we're gonna just do the, the quad exercise we've been playing with for a while, but bringing this, um, all the different elements together. And we wanna feel the central pillar, we wanna feel our, our three pillars as we're, uh, we're doing it, but we're going to feel the ball, set the knee and spiral down to the right. You're releasing the right quad and there's that slight little turn there, just enough to release the quad and be able to sink into that right leg. And as we do that, reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers and feel that. So we're creating that mobilization of the chi when we do this. And then we turn, use the yao and turn back to center. 
So it's turning the waist. So we're spiraling down, release, sung kwa, and then turn the waist back to center. One more spiral down and hold that. See how much you can release into that leg. Really feel it taking over and doing all the work, but in a very soft way. And turn back to center. Now spiral down to the left. Release, reach with the reach with the elbows, fingers, and turn back to center. So slowing it down like this allows us to coordinate that elbows with the with the qua. Turn back to center. Spiral down. And turn. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Pick up the front heel. So we're loading up that left quad. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Release, feel the elbows, feel the fingers. And turn back to center. Left ball set the left knee, spiral down and turn. Bow down to the left. And back to center. Bow down to the right. Feel the elbows. Load up, feel into that. Allow yourself to relax into that, into that left quad. Feel into that, feel the support of that. Feel the yin support. Feel the yin chi bubbling up, filling your body as you do that. And turn. Bow down to the right. And turn. Bow down to the right, feel those elbows, feel the fingers, reach with the crown. Keep putting those pieces of the three pillars back in place. And back to center. Good. Okay, left foot forward. Pick up the right heel. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Load up and turn. Spout out to the left, elbows, fingers. Feel, feel the chi and turn. Spout out to the left. Bow down to the right. Feel it, feel the elbows, feel the fingers. Turn. Bow down to the right. Really sink, release and turn. And spiral down to the right. And turn. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Pick up the left heel. Spiral down to the right. Sink, feel the elbows. Turn. 
one out of the right. Right. Think, feel it. Feel the elbows. Feel the fingers. And turn. Spiral down to the left. And turn. Spiral down to the left. Turn. Out of the left, relax into that, sink, and turn. Yeah. Step up, feet parallel. And just allow yourself to get very soon. Feel your three pillars, feel your elbows, feel your fingers. Feel the insubstantiality of the chi, but how profound it is, and how it becomes almost as as prominent as as the physicality, maybe even more. Bring your arms up, bend at the elbows. Reach out with the elbows. Yeah. Rotate your forearms, reaching with your little fingers as you turn and just feel into that. And turn back, reach with the thumbs. Reach the little fingers. Reach with the thumbs. And continue. Really feel into those subtle movements and the energy that they're producing. You feel the little fingers you turn, palms up. Feel the thumbs as you rotate, palms down. So in this, as we turn palms up, the little finger becomes the substantial. As we turn back, the thumb becomes substantial. What makes it substantial? It's the one I am thinking about. It's the one that I am feeling. I'm bringing my awareness to that part of my body and that is what makes it substantial or insubstantial. You feel the chi in your hands, feel the circulation, the heat, the pulsing, the, the fullness. Your right hand, feel the 
reach with the index finger, feel the elbows, turn and feel the wrist as you reach out. And then spiral down to the right as you turn, feel your elbow reaching back, feel the fingers, the wrist, turn. And then left hand, feel the elbow, the wrist, the fingers, turn. And elbow, wrist, fingers, and coming out with the right hand now. You feel the substantiality changing as you move. Yin becomes yang, yang becomes yin. Substantial becomes insubstantial. Feel the connection, ball, knee, qua, elbows, fingers, wrists. And pause for a moment and feel. Feel the whole body energetic connection. Feel the tensegrity of the structure. Turn, reach. Feel the connection from your fingers down through your feet and into the earth. Feel the connections with the heavens through your, the crown of your head. And bring your hands down. Feel the different energy that was produced there. So what makes this Jin is the meeting that is bringing your awareness and extending from the wholeness of your being to create a form, allow the energy to become physically expressed. Palms up. Actually, we're gonna do this the other way. We're gonna do it. So palms down. So feel the fingers, feel the elbows, feel the feet. Reach with the wrists. Feel that reach of the fingers. Reach with the elbows, open up between your shoulder blades, extend your hands out, feel your back opening, expanding. Reach down to the elbows, the wrists, the fingers, sung, sink. Ball, knee. Feel the wrists. 
Reach with the fingers, open the back, reach with the elbows, elbows, wrists, fingers, sink. Feel a wave coming up from the ball through the knees, through the quad, the spine, shoulders, down your arms, reaching with the wrists, feel the fingers, this big wave coming through and out your hands, elbows, wrists, fingers, and the wave retreats. Ball, knee, quad, spine, shoulders. Reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. Open, open the back, elbows, wrists, fingers, sink. and hold, reach, feel that expansion, feel the yang energy of that posture, reaching, opening, and feel the yin as the wave retreats, sinking, dissolving, emptying out. Now feel into the no movement. Feel the stillness and movement and the movement and stillness. Pivot on your left heel, step forward with your right foot. Bring your arm, your right arm, so that the hand is right over your, the center line of your body, the palm of your hand, elbows relaxed. Bring your left hand to your right wrist. Spiral down to the right, loading up into that right leg, open. And then turn. Going down. And spiral down to the left, arms come up and turn. Spiral down to the right. Open, reach with the elbows, through the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and turn, use your yaw, and the arms are reaching out, extending. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, elbows reach, wrists come up, the right ball spiral to the left and turn. Bow down to the right, open. Left leg, bow down to the left, turn. Bow down to the left, reach. Bow down to the right, right leg, bow down to the right and turn. Yeah. Step back. Step forward with your left foot. Bring your left arm in front. 
Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, open. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then turn to the right and feel your elbows, feel the fingers. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, arms come up, feel your elbows, feel, reach with the wrist. The hands are very relaxed. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn. Press. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. You're loading up that left leg, reaching with the fingers, reaching with the wrists, the elbows. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then turn. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, reach with the wrists, elbows. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Turn. Down, step in. Allow yourself to feel all those different shins that we've just been playing with. And not thinking about any of them, just feel them. They exist as potentialities within your, your awareness and within your energy. Allow them to sort themselves out, to find their place. Down to the left, loading up the right leg, step in. Take a deep breath, inhale. And exhale, dissolve the chi. Feel into the emptiness, the stillness. Grab a seat, please. Anybody, uh, have any questions, thoughts? Scott. Um, just a minor thing, but it's really, I'm really curious. When we're standing heels together, toes apart, are your heels actually touching? Optional. It's optional. Anybody else? Lynn. Oh, that was wonderful. I needed that after hiking. I needed to stand on my feet a lot more after hiking four hours. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. Um, and I didn't have any trouble, you know, with energy flow and all that, but I, I do have a, 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 a hole in the middle of my back that I feel like it's, it's like a little um, black hole where... Jeez. It's a T void, yeah, where it's tight and it, things don't things get caught in it or it doesn't uh, it doesn't participate in the galaxy of greatness that's going on. Mm. So I, um, I, I guess you could are, say I'm just tight back there, but that would be less poetic. 
Um, <laughs> Much more poetic the way you put it. <laughs> and, and what, what is the location of this particular black hole? Uh, can you see? Uh huh. Right between the uh, between the shoulder right between blade. The shoulder blade. Uh huh. Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and it, you know when we extend the shoulder blades, it gets a little better. But uh, and and sometimes it goes away when I'm doing that, but not always. So hints would be great. Uh, well, you'll notice that that's just opposite your heart center. So it is. Uh, it's a it's one of those gates that one has to open. And um, so what you're feeling is the you know, the recalcitrance of that particular gate as it uh, as you are doing it. But you're all the other gates are, are having fun and they're playing. So uh, so they can they can speak very lovingly to to the little buddy there and say, "Hey, come join the fun. This is, we're having a good time here." And uh, yeah, so actually, you know, just I, I, my my suggestion in any such situation like that is talk to it and say, "Hey, what's going on there, big fella? You know, what uh, can uh, you have something to tell me?" And uh, and you can find out from, you know, may come to you in any number of ways, but uh, you know, it um, it opens the conversation. It uh, if it's if it's the last holdout, then you know it probably try thinks it's doing you a big favor by doing <laughs> that. You know, <laughs> well, that's actually really interesting that you say that because uh, my acupuncturist, I went to acupuncture the other day and. And I said, what are the pulses, the, the you know, um, yeah, pulse points? pulses tell you. Oh, and uh, what's that word I want? Is that the word I want? Mm, yeah. Pulses. And and she said, well, there's a little stuck stuff around the heart. A lot of people are having a little stuck stuff around the heart with the mm. letting go of COVID and the, you know, the tensions in, in moving out. So, um, so that it's manifesting in the back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah, talk, so to it. talk to it. Yeah. Say, Good. <laughs> Great. You. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. That's that's beautiful. I'm sure others will benefit from that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. beautiful. Anybody else? Questions, thoughts? Uh, Valerie. Um. <clears throat> yes, I have that didn't think to call it a black hole, but I have that also. And I find that when I reach, you know, obviously not moving physically, but when I reach with my elbows, for some reason that seems to decrease the, pre not for some reason, but it decreases the pressure there. So it's like, my heart doesn't have to hold everything from what you're saying. That's just came to mind. Um, <clears throat> when we were doing the exercises, when we were, uh, the very first thing when we were, um, either on the right foot forward or back on the left leg and we were spiraling down to the right or then spiraling down to the left, it was hard for me, um, to feel my quad relaxing because <laughs> we were doing it for so long, boss that my thighs were just, they were working, which was a good thing. And I could keep up with you, which was a good thing. But it, it became more difficult for me to feel the claw relax just because the thigh is a big area. But then when we got into the other work, you know, it was like, okay, yeah, I can feel the, the, the claw relaxed here, you know? Um, so that like, you know, made me feel better. And something I have been, um, so I got lots of stuff. Um, the reaching with a knee one and um, dropping the uh, Wei Lu and feeling that the poles in, operate, in opposition. Yeah. There's an exercise I do in the morning <clears throat> and you've probably all done it at some point or other where you start off with all, you know, four, you know, both hands and both knees on the ground 
and you lift one arm and you point it out and then you lift the opposite leg and it's pointing out. And I've really taken that opportunity to feel the poles in, op in opposition, which is really cool because it's supposed to be for your back, right? It's supposed to be for your spine. And I, I feel like I've hit a new level of um, getting that, that stretch. And um, coincidentally, that really has helped my standing with really feeling the poles in opposition with that going down and that going up. Not that I didn't feel it before, but it's much more pronounced now. Um, right. And another comment that by the time we were done, I, I almost wanted to ask Scott, just try to push me, just try to push me. <laughs> I because I it, was no, it was no longer my feet, I was the earth. You know, it was just, I was, felt very, very solid and, Fabulous. you know, wasn't going, going anywhere for nothing. Um, so that was, yeah, it was great. It was, it was all good. It was all good. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and, and actually, uh, just a, a comment about, you know, the thighs getting tired, you know, while, while doing that. Uh, it, it's, it's good to do that past the point where you feel fatigued, you know, where your thighs feel fatigued, because that's where we reprogram and shift from the pushing away from the earth to the releasing down and, and the, the, the soft yin, soft energy, which is what you're feeling at the end there as you, at, you know, having gone through that. But we will all go through that thing where you're, you feel the, the young effort uh, getting fatigued and then you have, to, you know, then you finally let go and you say, oh, oh yeah, oh, this is what it's like. Oh, okay, got it. Scott, you have something? Yeah, exa actually exactly what you were just saying because I was having the same thing and my thighs were screaming and I remembered, oh, Rick said we're supposed to be relaxing into the end. And I kind of did that. And then they just stopped screaming. <laughs> Great. <Please. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you, but we were Terrific. <laughs> Good. Sharon. Um, an observation. When we were doing the exercise, we were um, reaching. Um, at one point, I said to myself, well, what am I doing with my eyes? And then I actually looked at something and reached for it. And that totally changed it for me when I actually had a focus. Nice, mm -hmm. nice, great, good. Sandy, did you have something? Yeah, I had a question on the, um, so when we, we raise the arms and we extend the, the, the wrists out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel really good, great. But on the way back down, I feel like I want to go back in the heels. Yes. Is there any... Should I just try to resist that or, or what's the? Well, um, it, it, it's a very natural kind of thing to, to want to do. And uh, uh, it's, it's easy to, to, to check and see, am I rooted in this whenever I go back into my heels or not? You know, and that is he just have someone push on you as you're, as you're, as you're going down. It's like, you know, the, we tend to want to go do, do the, you know, we do this, the young part, and, ah, great, we're expanding. And then we go here, we want to kind of collapse and, and, and like that. And you really, yin is not about collapse. Yin is about, you know, that motion in and down that, you know, it's, it's equally strong as the young. And we want to do that. If I go, and you can see it in my in my posture. If I'm if I'm going up and I'm in the balls of my feet, and I'm going up and I'm like this, right? Ah, okay. And then if I go into my heels as I go down, you can you can see there's a, a big difference in my energy as I do that. And so it's a good training for you and for all of us to be conscious of that the tendency that we have of wanting to shift back into our heels as we uh, as we go into the yin because it's 
you know, that's what we always have done. Well, oh, we're going to let go now. And uh, no, no, we, we want to, we want the yin to be as strong, as powerful as the yang. Or more, or more so. Scott. Uh, the way you, you explained it at one point um, <clears throat> about how um, the yin is condensing and that really, that, you know, picturing that as the actual energy condensing in my body really helps me, you know, that the body's not shrinking. It's just that it's, it's condensing. It's, it's going into a, you know, a ball and then it's going to expand again and contract again. Beautiful. That, that, that visual visualization really helps me with that. I, I, that, that, that's a great, great comment there, Scott, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that helps a lot there. So you want, you want to keep it going and it helps if you maintain the three pillars as you're retreating as much as when you're extending. Cool. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So I'm getting a cue here that it's time to wrap this up. So, uh, Thank you all so much and uh, love you. Oh, one fun thing. Uh, Dennis sent me this wonderful uh, breakdown of the first, what is it, the first half year of, uh, of uh, the wee bit of alchemy where he broke down things. I'm going to publish it on my, uh, on my website where he actually says where this exercise, at what point in the video that the exercise starts and you know, where he breaks down where the, uh, the different types of exercises it's 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 quite quite magnificent. So thank you very much, Dennis. I'll, I'll put Dennis. on the uh, I'll put it on the blog, and you can check that out. And and so you can go back and say if you want to you know, want to see what we were doing uh you know a year ago, six months ago, whatever. Pick out one exercise as a meditation. Beautiful, beautiful, great. Thanks. Thank you all thank so much. You. Love you. Love you guys. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Hey guys.